So Adobe came out with their Firefly 2 and it does not disappoint. So take a look at this. If you type in muscular female boxer into Dolly 3, you'll likely get something like this, which is getting good, but still it has that video game feel to it. It's not really believable. The dimensions aren't always right. And if we type it into mid journey, again, we get a little bit of that feel of a character. Also, the actual image, it doesn't have a ton of pixels in it, and it's not really, really lifelike. Like if we zoom in on her skin, it doesn't really look exactly like skin does. But take a look at how amazing Adobe Firefly, the type of images it produces. If I zoom in on her skin, you will see that they even have that peach fuzz that's occurring in a lot of people's bodies when you look closely at skin. The way her armpit folds are skin wise, it looks so real. Look at this vein just slightly coming out. And again, if we compare that to something that Mid Journey does, you will see that it's not really the same. Dolly 3 as well. So let's dive into exactly how to use Adobe Firefly 2. So if you have an Adobe account, all you need to do is navigate over to firefly.adobe.com and you will have access to Firefly Image 2. It's still in beta mode, but it is phenomenal. I also like the user-friendly aspect of it. And as I've mentioned before, the ability of it to go ahead and have a lot of skin detailing and depth of focus is super impressive, especially if you're trying to achieve photorealistic results. So let's take a look here and learn a little bit about it. So the first thing you can do is you could select this and if you want to use Firefly Image 1, I don't know why you would want to, but you can always switch back to an older version of Firefly. The aspect ratio, this is just detailing what the ratio of the photo is going to be. So is the image going to be landscape? Remember this number here, this is the first part of the ratio and it's usually width and then it's separated by colon and then this is the height. So if you want square, it's one by one. Typically most computer screens are 16 by nine. So that's widescreen right here. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'll just leave it at one to one. The content type. So this is important. Me personally, I love playing with photo realistic images because I want to use them for different types of websites. Uh, instead of buying stock photos, you can go and generate your own using Adobe Firefly. However, if you want to go into the art features, you can simply select art. When it comes to visual intensity, you're able to adjust the overall intensity of your photo's existing visual characteristics. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, I put in the prompt portrait photo of a female orthopedic surgeon with her arms crossed smiling isolated on the white background. I do a lot of portrait photography on the corporate scene, so I wanted to see what it came up with, and these are amazing. Now, what I noticed in this visual intensity, because this can be a little vague, adjust the overall intensity of your photo's existing visual characteristics. I wish they went into more detail. We kind of have to figure it out on our own in the meantime, but if you leave it toggled over here in the center, this is the results I got right here. And you could see that these are really, really good and pretty accurate to what I asked for. Now, if I go ahead and I bring the visual intensity down and I click generate, you will see that there's now a little bit of a toned down version of images. They don't pop as much, but they all look very, very real. Now, one thing I noticed that if you're working with photo, but you toggle the visual intensity to its max and then you hit generate, these now look like heavily edited Photoshop images and they're starting to look like these video game characters, but not quite. I mean, I still see people taking a regular photo, but then applying certain filters or editing a certain way on Photoshop to give it this type of feel. So it's still relatively realistic, but if you wanna go for that photo realism and actually make it seem like it is a photograph of an actual person, I highly recommend leaving the visual intensity in the center or below. Now what the style strength is, it's adjusting the strength of style, matching, and effects with a single control. So we'll get into the type Type of match in a second and that's where you can go ahead and upload your own image 
for reference. And then over here, you actually have your effects. So if you want to make this look like a painting or a digital art or hyper realistic, you can go ahead and select one of these. And then you can actually dictate the color and tone, black and white, cool tone, golden. This is all amazing. If you're into photography, you can even select the lighting. You can go ahead and select the composition. This is all so very helpful. And this is my favorite part, aperture, shutter speed, field of view. You can literally adjust the aperture. For those of you that are into photography, this is the f-stop. So this determines how sharp or blurry is the area behind the subject. Now, if you're doing headshots, behind the subject is usually a little blurrier and it brings the things at the forefront into more clarity. The shutter speed is how quickly the camera is gonna go ahead and snap. Now, this is pretty fast, the one two thousandths of a second. Typically, I aim for something that's one 125ths or one over 60 as far as shutter speed goes when I'm doing portrait photography. Field of view, we can leave this at 50 millimeters. Again, this is the angle of view, how much of the scene will be captured and the magnification. So how large individual elements will be. So it's basically dictating zoom. There's also advanced settings here. For instance, if I don't want the stethoscope, I can actually exclude the stethoscope from the image. So let's see if it'll work. So this thing around their necks, it's called a stethoscope. So if I exclude this from the image, and let's see if I wanna select anything else here. Maybe I'll select hyper-realistic. Let's see what happens when we do that. And then we'll play with uploading an image and seeing how that reference image is gonna help in creating the different types of versions that Adobe Firefly generative text to image will create for us. So let's click generate. So this is what it produced and it completely ignored my request to remove this stethoscope. But I think the reason why is you have to press return after doing it. So if I select enter, then this becomes a stethoscope with an X mark here. That means if I wanna remove it, I simply click it and I think that will resolve it. So let's exclude from the image stethoscope and let's hit enter. If you forget to do that, it's gonna leave it in. So now let's go ahead and generate once more. Okay, so it did a pretty good job in some of them. So now you see that in this image, and this last one here, it went ahead and it got rid of the stethoscope. Now I wanna try one more thing. If I get rid of this hyper-realistic, I wanna see if it'll actually give me more realistic results because we selected it as a photo. Uh, because I didn't really like the last four generated, it didn't look as real as when we just started. I'm also gonna bring down the visual intensity. Let's see if that helps us achieve really realistic portrait photographies of female orthopedic surgeons with their arms crossed, smiling, isolated on the white background. So I'm actually liking these. These look like exactly some of the photos that I would capture of orthopedic surgeons. As you can see, this one still has the stethoscope, but some of the others don't. And this looks so real, like even the light shining on her cheeks. Now it looks to me like her finger is messed up here or she's missing a finger, right? It's kind of creating a thumb and an index finger. Remember, these programs, they have a lot of trouble with hands, but in some of these, the hands are actually perfect. And so I'm gonna say, that Adobe Firefly, even though I love Midjourney, I pay for Midjourney, I teach Midjourney, I do a lot of AI workshops because of Midjourney, so I appreciate them a lot, but Adobe Firefly, they are now the premier generative AI if you're looking for photo realistic style imagery generated with AI. So before we round out this tutorial, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload an image of my girlfriend. She's wearing what looks like a lab coat and I wanna see if it's going to take into account the image we just uploaded, which is this one here. And we're gonna see if it creates those portrait style photographs of the various female orthopedic surgeons where it's gonna match the style from this reference image. 
And this is pretty neat. So some of these don't look as photorealistic as the one that we have here. But what I find interesting is the AI actually paid attention to the hair. So in this image here, I went ahead and I really cropped around the hair and I didn't leave too many hair strands. And it looks like they did the same exact thing where they like completely cropped around the hair. It's not the most realistic look, but it's really interesting that it grabbed that from the reference image. I'm gonna play around with this some more. So here's where Adobe really stands out. When you create four images, what you can do with them. So if you select one of the images, you can download it. You can copy the link, you can copy the image. And when you download it, it simply opens up in Photoshop or whatever you're using as your photo editing platform, or it just saves in your download folder. You could save it to favorites. You can report it if it's something inappropriate. And I've done this once or twice on these platforms. I've gotten some odd stuff. Uh, you can also rate it. So you can help the program by telling it was it good, was it bad. But the magic really happens underneath the edit dropdown. This is where we can use generative fill. This is where we can use this as a style reference, or we can do more of this in Adobe Express. I will cover Adobe Express in a separate video, but if you wanna add text, if you wanna remove the background, if you wanna apply filters and adjustments, this is where you would do it. But what I wanna cover today is the generative fill aspect right here, which is really awesome. So just by clicking background right here, you will see that it went ahead and it seamlessly cropped the background. Now, if you want to select everything but the subject, you can invert it and it will actually have the background selected. And if you want to go back to it, you simply click this clear button and we came back to our original image. Now, if we select settings, we can actually change the size of the brush that we're working on. This should all be familiar to you if you work in Photoshop. The brush hardness, this is how soft or how hard the brush is. So if it's hard, you will see that around it is very, very clear distinction lines. However, if the brush hardness is very soft, you'll see that it's soft, it's almost opaque, it's almost like looking through a clear plastic bag at the ends of it, where some of it is nearly transparent but not quite, and then eventually it turns into the photo. Now, if we also take a look under the settings, there's brush opacity. 100% means that it will completely remove the background. So when you select something, it'll completely remove it. Whereas obviously, if you select close to zero, you'll see that the brush will be very faint and you actually have to brush over a bunch of times in order to try to get it very clear. So we're gonna clear that. We're gonna select the settings. We're gonna go to brush opacity. We'll do 100. Brush hardness, we'll do 52. And the brush size, we'll leave at 24%. And what I wanna do is I wanna add some goggles to her. So what can I do? Well, here I can select add. So I will grab this where her eyes are. Describe the image you wanna create. Goggles, generate. So let's see what it creates here, if it's gonna apply those goggles and if it'll do it in the way I'm hoping it will. And it actually has. Now obviously this is a funny photo, usually astronauts would not also be wearing goggles. And as you can see, it's not doing the most amazing job at it, but it is pretty cool that you can do that. Now over here, I'm gonna select this area and I'm gonna say parrot. So let's see what it will do. So parrot sitting on shoulder. Now there's a parrot sitting on her shoulder, and if we move around, it'll show different types of parrots. Also, if you are very zoomed in, just in case you're curious what pan is, that just means that you can shift along the image. So let's say now you wanna create something on her forehead, you can move over to the forehead. Then if you want to create something in the bicep region, you could create something in the bicep region. And so that is a little bit what Pan is all about. That's the different generative fill options. I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think of Adobe Firefly 2 beta version? Have you been using it? Do you think it's actually better than Midjourney? at producing content that looks like it's completely photorealistic or does it still have a ways to go and mid journey is still the best one or if you think stable diffusion is still the best one let me know but i think 
that companies like Adobe that have so much money, it's been a highly profitable company for so long, and they have such deep pockets that it's going to be hard for Mid Journey to keep up. I think that Adobe being the premier photo editing platform they were a little behind the whole generative ai movement but they are catching up and catching up quick i'm very very impressed with the technology i'll be creating a tutorial on the video aspect of adobe firefly so i hope you appreciate that as well so if you want to keep me motivated in creating more of these please make sure to subscribe leave a comment on the channel if you appreciate these types of videos and i will see you all in the next one